Hey guys, uh, GreatGamer34 here. I'm back with another CPU video, and this one's going to be a little bit of a tutorial also. But it's going to not teach you how to build one, but teach you how to program it. So what I've programmed on here today is an actual program. And I'll go ahead and run it and give you guys some time to figure out what I'm running. So just to, let's start off. We're at a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 tick clock. If I counted correctly, this should be 16 ticks. Or 15. Hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. Let's turn this to 15 ticks. Alright, so now we have a 15 tick clock. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start it. As you can see, that's fairly fast. Now, the last video I did on CPU, uh, the clock speed was 30 ticks, so this is twice as fast. Now let's see what this is going to run. Give it a couple seconds for the screen to start appearing. Two, three, five. Have you guys figured it out yet? It's Fibonacci. So this is running the Fibonacci program. Um, now, That's all sweet and everything, but you guys may not know how to uh, make the Fibonacci program. So I'm going to show you how. Let me first stop the clock, and then I'll, get, I'll show you how. Okay, guys, so needed for this tutorial, you're going to have a CPU that has some basic instructions. You're going to need a CPU with at least one opcode for carrion, so that's easy enough. An ALU with carrion. You need a red, two registers. Preferably dual read for this setup. So when you write to a register here, uh, like that, you write to that register. When you write to one of those, you can read from that register on any side. That's dual read. So you don't need two sets of registers. You only need one register, dual read. Um, you don't need conditional branching, but that's going to clean up the programming. You're going to need jumping lines. You're going to need at least, you're going to need. Uh, to be able to jump back to line two, and this is going to be like a four-line program or three-line program. So, yeah, uh, enable jump is part of my my program counter that I'm using, and these are optional. Um, you have the stop clock command, which will actually stop the clock from running, and then you have the flood write, which will just if there's no data going through the ALU, it'll save zeros, but if there's data going through the ALU, it'll save that in. So that's useful for whatever. So, but that that writes every register, not just one. So now we got to look at our program here, and we see C in goes to A. Well, it's simple enough. So then A plus B equals C, B plus C equals A, C plus A equals B, and then you're going to have your programs for resets. So let's just take a look here and figure out what we have to set up. So I'm just going to look at that for a little bit and let you guys figure it out in your heads, and it's going to be quite easy. All right, so this is going to be a four-line program. And so let's go back over here, and we need carry in saving to A. So how we're going to do this? We're going to come to our first line of our program memory. We're going to come to here. It says carry in. So that's going to correspond to this red section here. We're going to place the torch. So carry in is going to save to. Well, which, what are blue? Blue is writing to register. So we want to save to A. So we'll save to one first line is done. Second line is now A plus B equals C. So that's simple enough. And what I mean by that is, if we saved carry into A, so we know A is 1, we're going to know that we need to read 1. We're going to need to read, oh, whoops, yeah, 1. We're going to need to read one from there, and we're going to need to read two, and we're going to save that to C. So that's A for one, plus B for two, this is binary two, is going to save to C, which is three. Next line, we're going to have B plus C equals A, and let's just double check over here. B plus C is storing to A. So let's just set up our storing to command. We know A is one. So we know that, and we know um, here's A. So 
we're going to st store B and C. So B is 2, C is 3. And then one more line left, which is our C plus A equals B. So we're going to say C plus A equals B, and that's going to be 3 plus 2 stores to 1. That's not right. All right, um, on our fourth line here, this should not be saving to the same spot as that one. It has to save to here. And then our, on our green over here, which is our other register that we're reading from, we're going to have two, three, and one. Now that should be correct because our one register is over here, yep. So now we need to set up conditions. So if you have these on a CPU, then you might as well use them. Um, now, this is our carryout, and here's our zero. So we're gonna be using a carryout. So we wanna be testing for carryout on every line that we're gonna be doing. So go ahead and test for carryout. So th since this is our last line, we don't need to test any higher. So we're gonna be testing for carryout. Now what happens when we reach carryout, and I forgot to delete the program in here, is when we get a carryout, or if we're te we're going to be constantly checking for a carryout, so it's going to constantly be turning off this torch. When our carryout actually comes through and turns on, it's going to disable this torch, so it's going to turn off power to this line. So it's going to turn off power to this line. So what we want is we could set up jumping, and we could set up other things such as enable jump or er, disabling the clock and flood writing. So what we're going to do is we want to enable the jump and we want it to jump to line 0. So when we input no jumping data and just enable the jump, it'll jump to line 0. We also want it to disable the clock and we also want it to flood the right. Sorry about that, steam messages. But the thing is we need it to before it disables the clock here, it's got to enable the jump. So the jump has to go through first, so we have to set some delay. Um, flood right is then going to wait for everything, so I kind of have to set that on a little bit of delay. And there, that's all set up. So now we need our actual program jumping lines. So you may notice that we are going to be not needing this first line, because this first line is just setting up, whoops, it's just setting up carry-in saving to a register. So we're not going to need to use this line ever again, except for when we start the program. So what we need to do is we're going to start, we're going to have to jump to line two. Oh, somebody's visiting me. We're going to have it jump to line two. But how do we do that? Well, we find our last line of code that we're going to be on. It goes one, no, it goes one, two, four, eight, enable jump. So we're going to have it jump to line two. We're going to enable the jump. And that's what's going to happen. So now let's watch our new program run. If I go ahead and start the clock, get it started, start letting it go, we should start seeing something along the lines of Fibonacci. And there it is, there's Fibonacci. So we just learned how to program Fibonacci on a dual read RAM computer. Um, uh, we could watch it jump. So it gets up to the fourth line, jumps back to line two, then comes to here. Oh, it must have stopped. It must have gotten a carry out. Nope. I don't know what happened. It borked. No, that's CPU. Oh, th the clock stopped. Well, it got a signal to stop the clock and reset everything. So it reset everything. So it worked just how we wanted it to. Now, just to make sure we'll reset the line zero and we'll flood right down here and now everything is reset just double checked so this is my video on or tutorial on how to program Fibonacci if you liked it please give it a thumbs up maybe give us give me a subscription you know um, I'll see you guys next time